Thank you, everyone, for coming here today. Now, often in science, two puzzles are each other's solution. In this talk, I will cleanly resolve two such puzzles, starting with the following. Grandparents who provide childcare for their grandchildren live longer than those who do not. This is very strange, considering that teenagers, I mean children, but teenagers especially, are awful. <laughs> As evidence, here is a teenage subject in 2005, um, and an email she wrote, I'm just gonna blow that up for you. Here are real words she wrote. As you can see, they're complete gibberish. <laughs> now, any reasonable person interacting with this teenager would expect to experience significant stress. <laughs> and yet, for some reason, grandparents exposed to this live much longer. <laughs> what is going on? Now, some might say that the grandmother hypothesis can explain this. This was proposed in 1957 to explain why women don't die at menopause. Um, <laughs> they continue to use resources despite being reproductively dead. Um, and the idea is that they provide childcare and that promotes survival of the group and survival of their genes. Um, but there's nothing in the grandmother hypothesis to explain why grandparents exposed to grandchildren live longer than those who don't. There has to be a feedback mechanism where exposure to teens makes you live longer. Um, but what is it? It's, it's unknown. So this is puzzle number one. Puzzle number two is the following. In 2010, researchers indi uh, <laughs> investigated news preferences of older individuals and found they preferred negative news about the young to basically anything else. Um, again, this is, this is very weird. That should cause stress which will increase levels of the stress hormone cortisol and thereby increase risk of heart attack. And I think the, the answer lies in noticing that maybe they're not experiencing stress. Maybe they're experiencing anger. <laughs> because now while, while stress increases cortisol, anger actually decreases it. This is true. <laughs> and it is through this mechanism the lifespans are lengthened. <laughs> um, let me lay it out for you. These negative articles about the young trigger anger that decreases cortisol, protecting the heart, increasing lifespan, and of course, if Grandparents are living longer, they can provide more care, and it's for this reason that teens evolved in the first place, their behavior. <laughs> and then once you see it laid out like this, it really becomes obvious, and there are signs everywhere. Heart attacks are most common in the early hours of the morning, a time when teenagers are asleep. <laughs> it's true. Now, the school year in most places is going to run from September to June, and that takes students away from their caregivers, and it's during those months that heart attacks are indeed most common. Now, <laughs> it's possible, of course, to have too much of a good thing. Now, a lot of studies have shown that if the amount of care providing goes beyond moderate, the enhancements to life expectancy disappear, uh, so we can account for this with a simple mathematical model. It's really too trivial to discuss further. Um, in, which, <laughs> in which cortisol levels decrease uh, during a period I'm calling the post-occurrence of rage cortisol hampering. Uh, and then there's this, this period of elevated cortisol. I'm going to highlight it in green. Um, where, where increased duration of youth exposure is actually now causing stress and increasing cortisol. Um, I'm calling this longer anger without need or lawn. It might be easier if I flip this upside down. Now it's a measure of heart protective index. And it's this period here that the teenagers really need to avoid. Yeah. 
they have to stay away from lawn. It's very <laughs> detrimental to their caregiver's health. Um, now, historically, our ancestors would probably have had a hard time controlling lawn. However, the internet allows older individuals to precisely modulate their exposure to anger triggers. And it's for this reason that we see internet use and life expectancy <laughs> so correlated. It's like really an astonishing trend, and the natural question upon seeing this is to ask, can we do further? Can we go further? Can we do more? And I say the answer is yes. First of all, it's really important that we continue to write negative articles about the young. <laughs> it's absolutely essential. It's important fodder for our older uh, family members. Um, and we, we will follow the mold of our ancestors. So here's Socrates um, engaging in this important behavior. The children have bad manners. Uh, here is Horus. We shall give the world a progeny yet more corrupt. Um, and here is their modern day equivalent, the Daily Mail. <laughs> it's really important work. Uh, and it's making the world a better place. Now distribution is important. Many older individuals interact with teenagers through Facebook. However, there will soon be no teenagers left using Facebook. Uh, so we will need to potentially simulate them. But, I mean, not everything has to be high tech. I mean, just reading the negative articles to them or going on walks with elders can still have this heart protective benefit. And I just want to close by saying that, in summary, a symbiotic relationship exists wherein Young people are obnoxious, old people are angry, and everyone lives longer. Uh, and to anyone who interacted with me in 2005 and found me infuriating, I just want to say, you're welcome. Thank you.